You know, number one thing we do is the credit shelter trusts, credit shelter planning. If that's not enough, now we're going to start looking at the life insurance trust. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, as we said, life insurance is included in your estate if you own it. If someone else owns it, it's not. So you can have a trust own it. You can have your children own it. The first thing we're doing is we're looking to get the insurance out because that's often what puts us over the number. If we don't have insurance to deal with, we have to get to you know, more advanced concepts. But you know, often the reason that we're over that $7 million number or a $2 million number, whatever number we happen to be working with, is because of life insurance. So the number one thing I think professionals think of is we need a trust. What we're talking about here is gifting. I mean, that's really what we're talking about when you set up this life insurance trust. You're gifting premiums every year to your children. So um, to take a step back, how much can you gift a year without incurring an estate tax? Can you gift a, a $10 million to your child? $13,000. Well, you're, you can gift, you're right, you can gift $13,000 a year to, uh, per person. But you can go five years in advance. You can only go five years in advance on a 529 plan. That's a special exception but you can't just give your child $65,000 today. Um, but you can uh, give $13,000 to your child, to your child's spouse. Your spouse can give $13,000 to your child and your child's spouse. So you can give a fair amount of money and it's a use it or lose it every year you get it. That's right, you also can give the, the $1 million during your lifetime. Okay? If you use up a million dollars today, and the number is three and a half million dollars that you can leave at death. You can only leave two and a half million at your death. You don't get a million today plus three and a half million. You get a million, you know, if I don't use my million during my life, I get three and a half million. So um, they, they are tied together. So now we've, we've got this life insurance trust, or we, we can gift. We can gift 13,000 per child plus spouses plus issue. Uh, so we can put a, you know, a fair amount into a trust every year to buy life insurance or give the money directly to a child to buy life insurance. Um, and as I said, if we give the money to the child, the child can use it to buy the life insurance. You get the exact same ramifications. Life insurance trusts are very, very common. And especially for people that sell them, they think, hey, well, you need to get this stuff in a trust, get it out of your estate. But the first thing I think you should be looking at is, is this something, do we need to go through the expense of having a trust? Um, if you have a trust, and the trust says, upon my death, collect the life insurance and then distribute it to my children. You could accomplish that exact same goal if you gave the policy to your children and they collect the insurance proceeds. And then you've, uh, you, you've saved the cost of, of having a trust prepared. So there's no advantage there. There's just, uh, you, you know, you make your annual gifts to the trust to pay the insurance premiums, make the annual gifts directly to your children and they can pay the insurance themselves. Obviously that's not going to work with young children. If you've got a, you know, or if you're, you, you've got children that are, you know, brain surgeons and anesthesiologists and want creditor protection, that they can't, you know, take their own assets and put it in a trust and get the kind of creditor protection that you can get from, from you know, leaving assets to someone in a trust. Most of these trusts are built with something called crummy rights which means if you really have that child that um, is going to take it, you can't, uh, and does everyone know what a crummy right is? What, what a cr crummy right sounds like it's a crummy right, but um, it's based on a case that their last name was crummy. And what it said was, in order to, to be a completed gift, the person had to have the ability to take the assets out. So what we do when we set up these life insurance trusts is we give them a withdrawal right, a period of time. You have like, 60 days to take out um, the, the $13,000 we just kicked in. And if you don't uh, take it out, you lose your right. So if you've got a child that's going to take it, then they, um, they're going to take it. With the life insurance trust, if you've got that child that I can't, I can't give them a withdrawal right because they've got a drug problem or something, um, you can use your million dollar number. They work a little differently than the annual exclusions and have it be a completed gift to the trust. So you have to start using it up. It's not the preferred way to do it, but in certain situations, you have to do it that way. So if you do have a problem child, there are ways to get around uh, the, the withdrawal right letter if you need to. Most of the time, the, it's not an issue because the parents say, I'm doing this, don't take it. And that's the end of it. 
Um, and, and yeah, and if a child takes it once, it's the last time you ever do it. It's a, you know, but uh, sometimes you just have that concern. And, and when you do have it, you can, uh, there, there is a way around it. Who's the number one creditor of your children? It's the most common creditor. Ex-spouse. Yeah, the ex-spouse. Uh, or I'd say your current spouse. Um, or your future ex-spouse, you know, you're not. But, but um, that's something that a lot of my clients are concerned about when they leave the assets to the children. They don't want the spouse to be able to get to those assets. And um, in most cases, inheritances are not for, we'll get a, a, just touch on domestic relations. In most cases, uh, an inheritance is not considered marital property. However, when you give it to a, your child, your child can commingle it with the assets and muck it all up. And uh, often in bad marriages, that happens. You know, you've got an overbearing spouse that's, you know, getting in all, all the money and everything. And, uh, and there's often a concern for that. So you can take that out of the child's hands by leaving the assets in a trust. Um, so that, that, that's uh, another reason to consider not just a, life, a trust in the case of a life insurance scenario, but also just I'm leaving assets in general to my children. Do I want to go longer in age or, or you know, where, which side do I want to err on? Do I want to err on the side of giving it to them too young or do I want to err on the side of giving it to them too old? Basically, I tell my clients, always err on the side of giving it to them too old because if someone's financially responsible, they'll appreciate it. They'll appreciate the creditor protection. But if they're too young, you know, they're too young. If they don't appreciate it, they're probably too young to inherit it anyways.